What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Houston Street Monsters. Back at it again with another video. Today's video is gonna be about the V3. So we put it on the dyno about uh, two weeks ago. We made some good numbers and something wasn't right with the mortar. Um, it was detonating, so I tore it apart and find out the, we're having a little bit of piston to head clearance issues. So we're pulling that mortar out. You know, I'm gonna send it out to get checked and freshened up or whatever. But since I already had the Texas Speed mortar here, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the car. So we're gonna grab all those parts that we have laying on the table and assemble this short block and hopefully everything goes smooth so we can put it back in the car and get it up and running. So we ordered this booth uh, online, got it about two years ago. It's doing great. We've been done a lot of coatings, powder coatings, uh, copper coatings, everything, you name it. So you find these on Amazon. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out this crank gear. I'm gonna reuse it on the other mortar. So this we're using on the new mortar. There's nothing wrong with it. We can reuse it. So all this fucked up shit, I don't even want to say where's it from. I don't know why. It still looks like. Uh, we're hanging Christmas lights around the shop on the outside trim. Mm -hmm. That's what you hear. We all have a Christmas spirit, so we're hanging Christmas lights outside. Y'all see it. I'll show y'all in the nighttime. That being said, it's already top dead center. You know what I'm saying? So we should be good on that. It's gonna make this mark be top dead center mm -hmm. under 12 o'clock because the cylinder one is top dead center. So this is the mark you do the keyway and this is gonna be at 12 o'clock. So we're good. Remember what we used? You don't remember? So guys, you know, we improvise around here and I'm gonna use one of my tire balancing adapters just because I know it goes over the cranks now, but hits on the gear. So I'll use that to push it in. That's it. That's how you do it. Like I said, we improvise, we use one of these but then we had one of my tire balancer adapters to walk it. Mm -hmm. It works, we'll see. Uh, so right now we're gonna get the camshaft. I'm just gonna lube it with some engine oil since we are gonna put it together and start it up quick. It's not gonna sit there for months. We got the uh, cam bolt. Don't forget to put the wishbone. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Always torque to specs. Right there. Could have been worse. All right. And then. All right, so we got everything as far as the timing chain, timing gear, oil pump, and now we move on to the uh, lifter trays and lifters. Wiggle in there, right there. Now guys, like I said, there might be more professional ways to do this or maybe a correct uh, sequence to do this, but mm -hmm. I don't give a shit. You know, this is my shit, we're not doing it for a customer or anything, so I'll learn the hard way. You know, if something's wrong, I won't do it again. No more than 10 pounds, I just do it hand tight and that's about it. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, well, we're putting up the Christmas lights because we are in the Christmas spirit, so the Denali or the Shelby is in the way. I'm not sure which ones he was talking about, but I told him the keys in the truck to move it. I'm gonna be tight, tight. I just see wherever they stop going in. Oh, 
Oh shit! <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm snugging them all first. cover from uh, Texas Speed that should get here today so well guys we're about ready to drop this mortar in we got all the front drive stuff water pump tensioners pulleys about to put on the alternator and then we should be ready to drop it in I'll check out Flaco's new toolbox matching the flooring shit a little different but sponsored by snap on everything in here is sponsored luckily we haven't had to pay nothing so we don't pay for anything, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to sell it quick because he's trying to buy a house. How bad does he want a house? I said, I can help you out with that house, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What happened? No, I see on the video. Huh? I went and bought this $300 bracket. Like I'm doing the 6.6 .6 iron block. The AC compressor doesn't bolt onto that block, so I had to buy the bracket from LME. About 300 bucks. It doesn't fit. So, so it's just right in the hole. And it doesn't. Maybe their uh, math is wrong or something. Cause the OD of this is not the same ID as the block. So, you know, we're going to need some more. Man. Like I mentioned earlier, we got this LME. Uh, accessory bracket so that we can mount the compressor. The reason I bought it is so that it can be just pretty much plug and play. We don't have to be wasting time modifying shit to make this work. When we first try to put it on, the OD of these inserts that go inside the block was too much so we had to fucking file it down a good bit so that we can make it slide in there. Now we got it in there, everything's torqued to spec, all that. I'm over here trying to put the bracket put it up against it and put the bolts, but the studs they sent, they stick out too much and it hits the back of the bracket so it doesn't let it sit flush. So what I'm gonna have to do is cut the ends off and shit. I mean, it's just shit that I didn't, didn't wanna do, but pay $300 for this and then you still have to fuck with it. So, so if I'm missing something, I mean, I can't Google shit cause it's not really much out there, not many people doing these 6.6 uh, .6 blocks yet. But um, yeah, I figured I'd get this uh, billet bracket to make things easier, but we already had to modify the bracket, the billet bracket. And now we still have to cut the studs to make it not hit the back of this bracket. So, so it can sit flush and have the correct fitment. So, looks like we're cutting shit up. You know, I haven't had good luck with LME in this past years, and uh, that's why I'm fucking with Texas Speed now, but. This bracket here, they make it, and I said, fuck it. But, it proved me wrong again, so, or right, or wrong. They, pro they proved me right about LME ain't shit. I would've fucking rigged up some other shit on the stock bracket, if I wouldn't know I was gonna have to rig this other billet bracket up too. Like I said, unless we're missing something, but I'll pull this motherfucker off and measure the studs they sent. They're just a little bit too long. This one really is the only one. This one's out of sight, out of mind, but this is the one where it hits the back of the bracket, so I'm about to cut that motherfucker. <coughs> the 
this thing acts up. Mm. Need to hit up our Snap-on guy until this thing is brand new. Precise cut, nothing happened to the billet bracket. See, we're good. Nothing happened, we're good. So yeah guys, that's why I'm kind of pissed off because I spend money on this thing to make, make it easy and not have to fuck with shit. I get it, it won't go in. We finally did that and then here I go trying to mock up the bracket and the back of the bracket hits the stud. So we screwed them in until they bottomed out. I had to cut it as that. So we just gotta go get shorter bolts. When I bought this car, this uh, coolant reservoir, one of the bolts are studs, because there's a stud, and then you just put a little nut, so it was like stripped. Gotta cut it off just to get it out. We don't need it, but it needs to be out of the way so that the new tank can sit there. And no, I don't like cutting shit, man. That's that snap on one right there. What happened? This thing's acting up. Put a little bit of force on it, and it shuts off for a few seconds. For the record, like I said, the car was already like that when I bought it. I think they tried to take off the tank, the reservoir tank up one time, and the nut stayed on there, stripped and welded onto the stud. So had to cut it off, but then we had to knock it off so it can be out of the way of the new tank. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. New mortar, new reservoir tank. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we took the other one off our manual shop break. How's that? We took the bottom one off our manual shop, didn't we? We got little nuts right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Look, uh, right there. Oh. And then, the one we lost, bro. You move shit around with this hole. All right guys, so just a quick recap if you guys skipped the whole video. <laughs> so we got this Texas Speed 416 stroker mortar going in here. That's an iron block, the 6.6 .6 L8T block. But she's going in and hopefully we'll put it in there and start the car. I told him I said try this. And then I was like, I kind of taste like this, man. This is not what I haven't even tried it, right? Because I haven't tried it. But some people do call it champurrado and they do it with rice. But the atole is el que tiene like little rice con con casco chata y calentito. Yeah. So what did I just drink? Just corn. Chocolate tamale. It's like a warm blended chocolate with masa. Corn, masa. They make the masa out of lard and shit. It smells like lard in there, man. I don't really? know. <laughs> Smell it. I mean, it's that big possibly. Everybody fucking does it different, so I don't know what the fuck they use. Fucking drinking lard and shit for breakfast. What was that, 15 minutes? Alright, guys, so we got the mortar in. Finally, after 15 minutes, put back all the harness, uh, then put back the blower, starter, headers, all that good stuff that we had to take off, and then hopefully start it. Let's go. Describe the shape of my, my, my disc, because I feel the, the it's, it's getting hotter and hotter. It's getting fucked up. We're making great progress, guys. Car looks like a car again, so. So they're saying it's supposed to freeze tonight or tomorrow, whatever, the next three days. And as you guys know, last year we had a, there wasn't enough electricity for the city of Houston. But the mayor's house was lit. <laughs> so I do have my uh, big ass generator. Remember guys, if you're cold, your cars are cold too. So bring them in. <laughs> All right guys, so it's freezing outside. But we're nice and warm in here. You see Flacco over there in shorts and it's 17 degrees outside and Flacco's over here on shorts and you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it ain't, yeah, we're good. So anyways, the motor's in, 
pretty much uh, only thing you got to do is plug the harness up, ground, and it'll be time to put the blower on there and then belt and all that stuff. So we're getting really close. It's looking good so far. Just a little things here and there that, you know, as you're putting it together, we kind of miss. But it won't happen again, right, Flacco? Nope. All right. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Good job, Baron. Good job, Flacco. Thank you. Crank it up. Baron, how cold is it outside? It's fucking cold. Is it freezing? Freezing. Put that little break in oil, baby. Big shout out to BP Racing for sending us this uh, break in oil. I don't know how much oil to put in there, so I just put it into, and when I see it overfilling, then I stop. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, this car takes 15 quarts, one uh, quart in the filter. So 16 total. So what I usually do is I put in this uh, BP breaking oil, start it up, warm it up, do a couple of donuts, drain the oil, and then put the oil that I usually run, which is Rotella or VR1, 2050. Yeah, stay tuned for the next video because we're going to reveal two purchases. Two additions to the family. When's the giveaway, bro? <laughs> Y'all make sure to go like, share, and subscribe because as soon as we reach 10,000 subscribers, I'm giving away a vehicle. <laughs> like giving it away. away you don't gotta buy shit. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give it away. A lucky subscriber is gonna get it. You crazy. I am. So yeah, make sure you guys subscribe and tag friends on the comments and they subscribe and that's it so big shout out to snap on for giving this little cubbies we use them to uh, you know whenever we have spills or something or just small stuff we don't have all that room for a big ass uh, pan or something <laughs> damn that holds a leaking though <laughs> really? yeah it's literally just a magnet tray <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> don't listen to him <laughs> All right, so what we're doing is this valve here was originally up here and the hood hits it. So anyways, what we're, I went ahead and bought these little billet fittings to, and adapters and I'm gonna cut a piece of hose so I can extend it and we're gonna put this valve right here. I know you normally want this at the highest point of the car so when you're bleeding it, blah, 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 but we got the Weapon X uh, chiller and it's got another bleeder and we can pump it. It works badass, so don't worry about this one. Mm. That's all there, purging up. You're adding? Yeah. All right. The bleeder valve for, um, uh, for the Weapon X chiller. Big shout out to Ben, Weapon X. Um, it uses the AC and it works good, so I still got AC in the cab and it shares it with the chiller, so it works good and easy to bleed. We get all the air pockets out. All right, so we got all the fluids in the car, oil, coolant, heat exchanger coolant, everything. Uh, this is a new mortar, so I'm gonna try to crank it over a few times before I try to actually start the mortar. So. Crank it up, get some oil going, and then I'm gonna try to start it. Little rigged up shit, just to jump it and let that pump run without having to turn the key on and all that shit, so it works. I'll save this little sucker for later. Yeah, everything's good.